Well, you don't have to price your prints so high that it turns off your target customers and potential wholesale buyers down the road. You also don't want to price this so low because a low price could also send negative signals to the customers. Like, what's wrong with the print? How much do you think this piece of art print is worth? $5? $50? $500? We've all seen art prints priced in all of the above ranges and even much higher, but at the end of the day, it's just some ink on a piece of paper, right? This is a tough question to answer, pricing your art print. Back in business school, there was a whole class dedicated to pricing strategy for products that involved a lot of formulas and frameworks. Pricing our own art can be extra tricky because we're too close to the problem as the artist. And it's not an objective problem because technically there's no right answer. The value of art is so subjective that it's impossible to find a price that everyone will approve. But getting it right can make all the difference in building your thriving art business. In today's video, we're going to dive into the art of pricing your art prints. I'm not talking about original artworks like paintings. I'm strictly talking about art prints, which are reproductions of your original work, like this one of my watercolor painting. I'll share with you a somewhat simplified recipe that's worked for me, so let's get started. My art print pricing strategy involves a little bit of math and a little bit of research and a whole lot of curiosity and patience. So the first ingredient in this pricing recipe is math, but we're not doing calculus here, so don't worry. You just need a very simple spreadsheet to list out all your materials. It's essential to consider all the expenses involved in creating and selling your art prints, taking into account cost of materials, printing, framing, if that's something you offer, packaging, and shipping. You wanna ensure that you're covering these costs while also making a profit. So for example, in order to ship a print like this, I need a backboard. I need the clear sleeve to protect the print. I need an envelope or a mailing tube. I also need to pay for postage. So I know you're looking for more concrete numbers, so I'll share mine. But please know that this is not the golden rule. My personal rule of thumb is I need my prints to be priced at at least 3.5 times my production costs. So if it costs me $5 to print a print, I need the retail price to be at least $17.50. This is a bare minimum because I still need to absorb other costs like the ever-increasing shipping costs, credit card fees, and other expenses for running my business. This margin also ensures that I can support my wholesale business because for wholesale, you are selling your prints at a 50% discount in large quantities to store buyers. And if you sell prints at different sizes, you'll also learn that your profit margin is different for each size. So here's a list of materials I need to produce, package, and get my prints ready for shipment. I use two of my most popular print sizes as an example uh, because the cost for some of these materials tend to vary by size. Uh, notice here that I've also added a 15% margin of error because I want it to be on the conservative side and round up my cost. Sometimes I may get a paper jam or misprints, test prints, and sometimes the cost of shipping some of these materials may go up and down as well. So I just wanna be on the conservative side. This number here, the total cost of print are my cost of goods sold or short, uh, COGS for short. These are the direct costs that go into producing my prints and um, you never want to price your prints directly at or just slightly above this number because you're probably going to be losing money. That is because uh, there's also indirect costs that's associated with making your prints, making and selling your prints, as well as you're running your business in general, such as um, taxes, web hosting fees, shipping fees, transaction fees, etc. And those are called the operating costs. So, these are my listing price here for these print sizes. You might notice that the gross profit margin is really high and that I'm probably just raking in dough. But uh, in reality, like I said, after a lot of these other costs are added in, it does bring down the net profit considerably. For example, I've often have to absorb my shipping costs on behalf of my customer because nowadays uh, it might cost you know, 5 to $7 to 
ship a print with tracking number, but I'm only charging them four to five dollars per print. So all of these things could、um, bring down your net profit, and that's something you want to be conscientious of when you're pricing out your art prints. Another thing I have to bring up is I get a lot of questions from people who print their art prints at home, and they ask me about how to how to calculate the cost of ink on each print if you print the art yourself. You are never going to get an accurate number. Unless you want to monitor your ink usage for each cartridge, and each cartridge runs out at different rates, and you account for the number of times you have a misprint or paper jams halfway through a print, and consider the fact that some of your print use up more ink than others, it's just not worth it getting that exact number. I use the cost estimator from Red River website to estimate my cost per print. I'll include a link in the video description. I also look at high level how much I spend on ink cartridges and paper every year to get a rough idea of how much ink per sheet I spend. Luckily, my Epson printer is pretty low maintenance, so I rarely have to spend any money on printer maintenance other than getting the maintenance cartridge replaced maybe twice a year. So there's not a lot of extra equipment cost there. So if you are a control freak and need to know the exact number. I'm telling you, it's not possible. You either have to let go of some of the controls of knowing all the numbers, but you have full control over your own production, or you have to let go of control of the production process and sacrifice some profit margins by outsourcing it to an outside printer. That way, you'll know exactly what you pay for each print. Now, let's move on to the next ingredient: research. It's crucial to gather data about the market and what's currently working, but there is a but, and I'll cover that in a bit. To get a sense of the price range that customers are willing to pay for prints like yours, you can look online at popular sites that sell prints like Etsy, Society6, Fine Art America, etc. This shouldn't take more than a couple of hours to do, and you shouldn't have to go down a rabbit hole. You should, however, mainly validate the pricing with products that you know are selling. Just because a print is listed for five hundred dollars online, if there are no verified reviews or some other ways of proving sales, you don't know that there's actual demand for the print at this price. For this market research, I also don't recommend using only Etsy as your preference as your reference point, even though they do provide sales numbers and reviews, which is very helpful. My reason is a lot of times the sellers on Etsy will price the prints according to what everyone else is doing on Etsy, but it doesn't mean that that is the true market acceptable value for your print outside of Etsy. In fact, sometimes by pricing your prints too close to everyone else's, it makes your works kind of just blend in. Take note of the prices and factors that you think differentiate higher price prints. From lower price ones, this research will help you position your prints competitively in the market. Product positioning is a whole other topic that I don't have the time to cover in this video, but let me know if you're interested. The final pair of ingredients in our pricing recipe is curiosity and patience. Determining the right price for your art can be intimidating, but it's important to believe in the value of your work. While you don't have to price your prints so high that it turns off your target customers and potential wholesale buyers down the road, you also don't want to price it so low because a low price could also send negative signals to the customers. Like, what's wrong with the print? Remember, pricing your art is not an exact science. It's an ongoing process of trial and error, which requires you to be patient while seeing how the market responds. Try different ways of selling, like online on marketplaces like Etsy, and at in-person events like art and craft fairs. If you're just starting out, selling at these in-person events will be the fastest way to get customer feedback on whether you are pricing it right or wrong. I understand that it's hard to have the confidence to stand behind your prices when you haven't had many sales yet. Which is why the most important thing that you need is to approach it with curiosity rather than seeing it as a test of your self worth as an artist. I know, I know, it's harder said than done, but be open to adjusting your prices based on feedback from customers and market trends, 
and the changing cost of your production. Try to embrace the journey and be kind to yourself. Remember, pricing your art is not a one and done deal. It's an ongoing process of learning and adapting. So while we should all encourage each other to price our worth, there is a spectrum between zero confidence and self-delusion. And we should aim to start somewhere in the middle and adjust as we collect more data from other people. Remember, you don't have to have everything figured out. You just have to take the next step. Keep going and I'll see you in the next video.